welcome today we are going to learn about the real time pcr or the rt pcr and it is also known as the quantitative pcr or the q pcr what do you mean by the real time pcr it is a technique used to quantify the nucleic acid present in a sample during pcr reaction okay it is known as the real time pcr or the quantitative pcr now uh, in a normal pcr what we do we allow the reaction to go on it is going to complete the cycle and after completion of the cycle then we are going to identify or we are going to quantify the amount of the dna which has been amplified during the pcr reaction but if we want to know that to how much amount of the dna it is amplified in a particular cycle suppose at the 20th cycle how we can calculate how we are going to determine it for that purpose the method which is used for the quantification it is a quantitative pcr or it is called as the real time pcr so here the rt pcr is invented to measure the amplification of the dna at each cycle of the pcr and for this quantification okay the hegu uh, et al in 1992 93 he has uh, demonstrated it with the ethidium bromide okay that is he has used the uh, stain and that stain it was the ethidium bromide and that ethidium bromide then replaced by the sybr green one now uh, here okay here it is a double stranded dna and ethidium bromide and sybr green one both has the capa capability to get bound with the dna double stranded dna that is it is going to intercalate uh, in the double stranded dna and when it is going to intercalate in the double stranded dna at that time the fluorescence of both of them it is going to increase by the 100 fold so uh, so here you can see that okay this one it is a sybr green one okay and this dot they are of the lighter color and when when it is bound to the double stranded dna how you observe here it is a darker color that is the intensity of the fluorescence it is going to increase when that when this sybr green one it is going to bound with the double stranded dna and as the quantity of the dna it is going to increase okay the quantity of the dna it is going to increase the fluorescence it is also going to be increased okay now in the pcr what is happening there is a replication okay or uh, you may call it as there is a amplification there is a synthesis of the second strand of the dna daughter strand of the dna it is going to be synthesized okay so it is a double strand dna Uh, during the denaturation both the strands they are going to be melted then there is a step annealing then there is a extension and in the extension you observe that after extension you observe that there is a doubling of the starting target dna okay and to this dna who will bind then your uh, sybr green one it is going to bound so the fluorescence ultimately it is going to be doubled than the fluorescence which is at the starting point okay so so by measuring this fluorescence okay by measuring this fluorescence we can find out okay what is the concentration of the dna uh, in a given particular cycle or uh, you can uh, determine the determine the concentration of the dna in a particular pcr cycle now uh, here okay here it is the graph okay and the graph it is the cycle number versus the fluorescence okay so the number of cycles it has been set up okay and uh, after every cycle the fluorescence it is going to be measured and that fluorescence it is going to be plotted here okay now uh, what you observe here okay if you look at this graph what you observe here there is a baseline that it is a background fluorescence okay and uh, what you observe at this point you can see here okay okay here okay at this from this point okay there is okay lifting of this fluorescence okay the fluorescence it is going to lift it from the baseline okay means what at a particular okay at a particular cycle the fluorescence it is a detectable one 
Now, what is this background fluorescence? Here uh, you can see these are okay. These these are the dots. Okay, these dots it has also that is this uh, SYBR green one. Uh, this okay. This has also its own fluorescence, but the fluorescence level it is a lower one. And when it is going to intercalate its fluorescence, it is going to increase. Okay, but here due to this okay due to this stain which is which is unbound to the dna it is also giving the fluorescence and the fluorescence by the uh, fluorescence given by the binding of the sybr green to the double stranded dna uh, that totally okay that totally it is going to be plotted here and here it is observed that the fluorescence it is not observed to be get increase till particular cycle okay so uh, uh, so the value which is going to get increased uh, from the baseline that value it is called as the threshold value okay the minimum amount of the fluorescence that can be re reliably detected by the quantitative pcr apparatus is known as the threshold value that is the fluorescence now here we can see okay here we can see at this point okay here there is okay there is a lifting of the fluorescence from the baseline and that that value it will be called, called as the threshold value and the cycle at which there is a detectable amount of the fluorescence that is where there is a threshold value it is going to be observed that cycle it will be called as the threshold cycle or it is called as the ct okay this it is a ct it is a threshold cycle and when when there is a threshold cycle at that time you can calculate, okay, you can calculate the amount of DNA in a particular cycle by the formula Tn is equal to T0 in bracket e raised to n. Tn, it is the amount of the target DNA sequence at a cycle n. T0, it is the initial amount of the target and E, it is the efficiency of the amplification. So, when you know the T0, E and n, at that time you can calculate the you can calculate the amount of the DNA in a particular cycle, PCR cycle. Okay, now uh, here in this graph, now you can see the 2.12 figure. And in that, what you observe that the there is a graph and that graph it is a log of initial concentration of the DNA versus the threshold cycle. Okay, that is you are taking, okay, you are going to take the uh, number of known initial concentrations of the DNA, okay. And then you are you allow the cycle to run, okay? That is the PCR to run, and uh, in that you are going to calculate the threshold cycle for uh, various concentrations of the uh, DNA, okay? And uh, after that you are going to plot it, okay? And it is going to be a straight line. And when you take the slope of that straight line, it is minus one by log of e, okay? E it is efficiency. So by having this standard curve okay by having this standard curve you can calculate the efficiency of the pcr okay and most of the time the efficiency it is efficiency of the pcr it is a maximum two so here you know now the efficiency of the pcr you know the initial concentration of the dna then easily you can calculate the tn that is the amount of the dna present into a particular cycle okay now here the threshold cycle okay the threshold cycle that it is the ct it is going to vary according to the initial concentration of the dna okay now here okay it is a cycle number it is a fluorescence okay as as the okay as the initial concentration of the dna it is lower one the threshold cycle is requiring the longer time to reach up to the threshold value, thus to reach up to the threshold cycle. And if the initial concentration of the DNA, it is a higher one, then the threshold value, it will be reached earlier. So the threshold cycle number, it is also going to be a lower one. Thus, the initial concentration of the DNA, it is inversely proportional to the threshold cycle. Okay. So, uh, in this way, in this way, there is a relation between the initial concentration of the DNA and the threshold cycle. Now, which are the factors which are affecting the efficiency of the PCR? 
the PCR inhibitors, then the non-specific priming events, then there are the inappropriate choice of the primers, probes, and the amplicons. These are the factors which are going to affect the efficiency of the PCR. Next. Different ways of generating the fluorescence in the quantitative PCR reaction. How how you are going to how you are going to quantify the uh, quantify the amount of the DNA in a PCR cycle. For that purpose, you are requiring the uh, fluorescence. And first, we have here initially we have learned about there is the use of the ethidium bromide. There is the use of the SYBR green one. Both of these tens it can be used, but the these stains, they are not specifically binding to the double standard DNA. That is, whenever there is the presence of the primer dimer, to that primer dimer also, these stains, they are going to be, or these dyes, they, uh, they, uh, they can go and bind there, and the, there will be the false positive results. Okay, and to uh, to overcome this, okay, to overcome this drawback of the ethidium bromide and SYBR green one, there is a use of the Tacman probe, Molecular beacon and the scorpion probe. Okay, now first we will go towards the Tacman probe. Tacman probe, uh, it is consisting of the probe. Okay, probe, you know, it is a complementary DNA sequence, a short complementary DNA sequence. And to this probe, there is binding of the reporter. That is a reporter, it has been attached to this probe at the 5' prime end. It is a reporter, it is a fluorescence molecule reporter dye it is here and there is a quencher quencher it is uh, which is going to quench the reporter that is it is going to lower the activity of the reporter that is the fluorescence dye that it is a quencher okay so the reporter at the five prime end and quencher at the three prime end now we will see how it is going to work okay Now here in this diagram, you can see that it is a double standard DNA. It is a target DNA. Okay. And here, here it is a forward primer and here it is a reverse dimer, and here it is your Tacman probe. Okay. So uh, in the annealing reaction, okay, in the annealing reaction, the primers, they are going, okay, the primers, they are going to anneal to the target DNA. And then, okay, and then there will be the extension, okay? Then there will be what? Then there will be the extension reaction, okay? So the tag DNA polymerases, it is going to do the extension of the primer, okay? And the probe, it has also get bound to the target DNA during the annealing reaction, okay? So there will be the synthesis of the second strand of the DNA. And when there is a synthesis of the second strand of the DNA, the tag DNA polymerases, it is going to reach up to the your Tacman probe, okay, and there will be a displacement reaction, and you, you should remember that the tag DNA polymerases, it has a 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity. So, what it will do here, it is going to cleave the probe, okay, and when there is a cleavage into the probe, at that time, the reporter, it is going to be free, okay, here you can see the reporter, it is a free, and as it is free, it is now away from the quencher. So, the effect of the quencher on the reporter, it is now diminished. Okay. Uh, it is finished now. Okay. There is a no effect of the quencher over the reporter. Okay. So, uh, what do you think? What, what do you think? Now, the reporter, it is a free. Quencher effect, it has been lost. And due to that, the reporter, it is going to give the fluorescence. Okay, and that fluorescence, okay, that fluorescence now it is going to be matured. Okay, so the reaction it is how in the annealing, the primers they are going to anneal, also the probe it is going to anneal to the target DNA, then there will be the uh, polymerization, that is there is extension, in the extension tag DNA polymerases it is used and when there is a use of the tag DNA polymerases, it is going to do the strand displacement and it is going to cleave the 5 prime end of the probe and reporter it is getting free and as the reporter it is it is free now it is give the fluorescence and that fluorescence now it is going to be matured okay in this way there will be the generating of the fluorescence 
and in this way we can by measuring the fluorescence we can get the ct value and accordingly that we can uh, we can have the tn values next there is a molecular beacon okay molecular beacon it is a hair pin structure okay you can see it is a hair pin structure okay and hair pin structure of the dna this one it is a probe okay and here it is a reporter this uh, purple all the violet color it is uh, it is it is the reporter and this gray color it is the quencher so when there is uh, adjacent uh, when when the reporter it is adjacent to the quencher the effect of the report, reporter it is not a sufficient one to give the fluorescence now uh, here okay this molecular beacon okay when it is going to identify the uh, complementary base pairs at that time uh, there is a denaturation okay denaturation of this molecular beacon and that molecular beacon now it is getting hybridized with the target dna and when it is getting hybridized with the target dna it is now becoming a okay uh, uh, now uh, what you observe here how it has been become it is it is away okay uh, this uh, this it is, this hybridization it has been lost and a new uh, hybrid it is made and that that hybrid it is in between the target dna and the molecular beacon and uh, here you observe that reporter now it is away from the quencher and as it is away from the quencher now reporter die it can give the fluorescence and it is getting fluorescence and that fluorescence it can be measured okay so this it is regarding the molecular Beacon. Next, it is a scorpion probe. Here is this one. Okay, this one it is a scorpion probe. Okay, so scorpion probe. Uh, it has the. Uh, it has this purple color. Okay, this purple color. It is a quencher. This gray color. It is a reporter. Okay, this wavy line. Wavy purple line. It is the. It is a PCR blocker. And this straight line with the arrow at a three prime end, it is a primer. And this, okay, and this one, okay, pin structure now from this hairpin, this loop, okay, this loop, it is the probe. Okay, so uh, so here we can see that the quen the quencher and the reporter they are adjacent to each other. So the quencher it is going to show the effect over the reporter and it is not allowing the reporter to get fluorous. Okay, so this okay this one it is a scorpion probe. Okay, okay. Now how the reaction or how the scorpion probe it is going to do its work? Now there is a heat denaturation. The first step of the PCR it is a denaturation. Okay, when there is a denaturation, the target DNA it is getting melted. As at that time only the scorpion probe it is also getting denatured. Okay, now the probe it has the primer. Okay, so when there is an annealing step at that time the primer now it is getting annealed to the DNA that is the target DNA and during the extension, okay, during the extension the primer it is getting extended. Okay, so the daughter DNA strand it has it is going to be synthesized. Next step, it is a heat denaturation. The target DNA it is denatured. Okay, uh, the newly uh, the DNA it is denatured. And next, there is what cool after cooling. What is going to happen? The probe. Okay, this probe it is going to get annealed to whom the target DNA. Okay. And when it is getting annealed to the target DNA, the quencher and the reporter, they are now apart from each other. So the effect of the quencher over the reporter, it is going to be lost. And the reporter, it is going to show you the fluorescence. And that fluorescence, now it can be measured. So uh, in this way, okay, so in this way, there will be the generation of the fluorescence at a particular DNA, uh, sorry, at a particular PCR cycle and the concentration of the DNA at that particular cycle, it is going to be measured. That is, TN can be calculated. Okay. So, uh, ethidium bromide, SYBR green 1. Then there is a Tachman probe. 
then there is a molecular beacon and the scorpion probes these are the number of molecules which are involved into the detection of the real time concentration of the dna during the pcr okay now where these okay where this real time pcr it is used that is the applications of the real time pcr first one it is during the uh, expression analysis micro rna and non coding rna analysis genetic variation analysis protein analysis mutation detection biomarker analysis cftr gene mutation analysis and tacman assay for the disease research these are the number of applications of the real time pcr okay i think you may have uh, understood the real time pcr technique if you have liked my video, please subscribe my channel and also share my videos with your friends so the knowledge it is going to spread. Thank you.